For the past 24 years, there we are interviewing together, what woman has led one of the largest public defender's offices in the state of Florida? Julie Holt was elected as Hillsborough County's public defender in 1993 and today overseeing more than 350 attorneys and staff. Annually, they represent more than 60,000 people who can't afford an attorney in the criminal court system. It is a daunting task, especially as new crises like the spike in opioid addiction and a growing need for mental health services strain their resources. And joining us to talk about these challenges this morning in our Sunday Spotlight, Hillsborough County Public Defender Julie Holt. Julie, good to have you here. Good morning. Good to speak to you again. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me, for coming. 24 years, no doubt a lot of crime trends. So uh, where does the opioid and the uh, prescription drug use rank in terms of the effects that it has on people's lives? Well, that's probably one of the, the biggest challenges that I think our entire community, including the entire state, is really faced uh, with challenges now because what we have to do is we have to try to figure out how do you intervene quickly, how do you get the drugs off the street, and for those people who have, have already become addicted, how do you get them the treatment to try and bring them back into society in a good way. So it's it's a daunting challenge if you talk to law enforcement, which which I do obviously regularly. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's like an everyday occurrence on the streets that you just see young kids who just don't realize the dangers of all the interactions of drugs, and this is a tough time. That is, and that's a huge challenge that law enforcement uh, faces right now, the, the epidemic uh, throughout the entire nation, not just here in Florida. I mean, we hear of these stories each and every right. day like you said it how do you deal with it it's a huge problem you use the word daunting well you have to you have to stop life long enough to tell the lawyers in the office this isn't about resolving cases right now we really do have to talk to every single client carefully challenge them a little bit to tell us the truth about where they really are in life and make sure that they get the correct treatment and it can't just be through the criminal justice system you've got to find that aftercare component too and so we're very fortunate here that we have a community that works together and so is coming up with a plan there's got to be a good balance you're saying Absolutely. So, you know, you talked about a prevention there. Uh, you know, how have the courts had to adapt to the crisis in terms of treatment versus prevention? Well, I think prevention sits really with law enforcement and, and with uh, our service providers where they intervene privately. Once you get into the criminal justice system, you're almost forced right into the treatment component. The other thing you have to do is educate our kids. You have to educate high schoolers, middle schoolers, and college kids about the dangers of these drugs that are out there on the street and that you may only get one opportunity and that opportunity may be deadly. And oftentimes, we, you know, we see that, you know, it's not only you, the, the parents oftentimes are using drugs themselves, so there is no education going on. If there is some type of education, it's through example, power through example. And, and that could very well be where somebody is coming. One of our clients may very well be coming from a community where that, that is something that they see every day. That's why the, the collaborative efforts of the school system, law enforcement, state attorney's office, private practitioners, public practitioners, all of us coming together and really addressing this is extremely important. Let's go ahead and turn to uh, juvenile cases right now. A lot of new challenges in recent years you know teens are finding themselves involved more and more in gangs these days and they're getting much younger and younger in these crimes are you seeing any kind of progress out there uh, with the kids in, in the system uh, really all together what I am seeing is we finally have recognized that this is something that we really have to address on a day in and day out basis and we have to do it across the board so it starts early on anytime you, you have a child that's in the public school system or in, or, in a, or in a school that really adopts this concept that we must be educators in all of these areas not just in math and science and writing and history we have to really educate about all of these dangers the drugs is a problem. Mm -hmm. Gangs become a problem only from the standpoint of when someone feels they have no alternative whatsoever but to become a member of, of a gang so that they can be protected. So we have to get into our communities and we have to talk to the kids, talk to the parents, and find out what the issues are. Let's talk about uh, former Hillsborough County State, uh, State Attorney Mark Over. <laughs> we know that the two of you uh, were on different sides of the courtroom for, what is it, 16 years? Is that right? That's correct. I, you've now had six months with our new state attorney. He's been on the show before, uh, Andrew Warren. Uh, I'm just wondering uh, what you feel uh, the transition has been like for you. The transition has been has been a good transition. Uh, you have someone who believes in criminal justice reform. You have someone who's coming in with some fresh, fresh ideas. Fresh well, You have some fresh ideas. And they're not only statewide, but national ideas, things that are happening in our country. And I think one of the things that, that we've got is people are coming to the table. He's taking a lead in a lot of the areas where I felt like I, I had to be the lead person originally. Juvenile civil citation, juvenile diversion programs, adult diversion programs. When you have the chief law enforcement 
individual mm -hmm. being the lead on those issues, I think you'll see other movement because the reality of it is, is when it's the public defender, uh, everybody thinks it's just a personal interest that I have for my clients. They don't realize, no, I, I care about the community as a whole and I care about the impact that the system has on, on people. And we know that your turnover is always an issue for your office, also the state attorney's office. So over the years, I guess, have you been able to find a solution to that problem, turnover? Well, turnover can be can be addressed, obviously, with money, which I'm not getting from, from the legislature at this mm -hmm. point in order to, to sustain that part of life. But what I've also discovered is hiring the right individuals, individuals who realize it's about public service, it's about, it's about compassion, it's about empathy, it's about making the commitment. If you can find those individuals, you'll reduce turnover, and I've, I've been able to do that a little bit. Okay, so we've got about 45 seconds before you go. I think, you know what, a question I'm going to ask you, there's been a lot of speculation about there, uh, about your future. <laughs> We've been talking about your work in the past. So what about your future? Uh, many sources are telling me that you plan on running for mayor once Bob Buckhorn leaves office. <laughs> many sources are saying that. So let's go to the, uh, to the root of the source, if you will. Or the, the, or, you know, <laughs> what's the word? The word is, I love the job that I have, and I'm going to continue in this capacity. I just, I just heard that from House Speaker Richard Corcoran. I have a voice. <laughs> I love what I do now. Come on. I don't have a pack that I'm creating. I don't have any funding that I'm doing. If you see what our, where I am, I have a good, long, strategic plan for this office. We're good. Once you uh, make the decision, <laughs> you, let, you let us know right here. You'll be the first to know. All right, Julie, thank All you right, so much. You.